Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this video is going to run through the physical or natural causes of climate change. So as always, check out the description box below for a worksheet you can use and complete as you're watching this video to help you create those lovely revision notes or to support you with your home learning. Now, when we think about climate change, okay, there are various causes of climate change, but this video is going to focus on the natural causes. So yes, there are many natural and what we call anthropogenic or human induced factors that contribute to climate change. But climate change has always happened on Earth. And this is clearly seen in the geological records that we have. It is the rapid rate and magnitude of climate change occurring now that is of great concern worldwide. But climate change has naturally occurred for thousands of years. So this is why this video is going to run through those natural causes of climate change. So the first concept associated with the natural cause of climate change is known as orbital theory or the Mavlankovitch theory. And this theory basically summarises how variations in the three types of the Earth's orbital movements affect how much solar radiation reaches the top of the Earth's atmosphere, as well as where the insulation reaches. These orbital movements, which became known as the Milankovitch cycle, cause variations of up to 25% in the amount of incoming solar radiation at the Earth's mid-latitude locations. So that applies to 30 degrees and 60 degrees north and south of our planet. And the Milankovitch or orbital theory includes three main concepts, eccentricity, obliquity and precession. So this concept was actually created and hypothesized by Milutin Milankovic, a Serbian astrophysicist best known for developing one of the most significant theories that relates to the Earth's motions and long term climate change. He dedicated his career to developing a mathematical theory of climate based on the seasonal and latitudinal variations of solar radiation received by the Earth which today is what is known as the Milankovitch theory, stating that as the Earth travels through space around the sun, we have variations in three elements of the Earth-Sun geometry, which combine to produce variations in the amount of solar energy that reaches the Earth. So the first element is known as changes in eccentricity. And when we talk about eccentricity, we're talking about the journey the Earth takes around the sun and the fact that it isn't a perfect circle, but it is pretty close. Now, over time, the pull of gravity from our solar system's two largest gas giant planets, Jupiter and Saturn, actually caused the shape of the Earth's orbit to vary from nearly circular to slightly elliptical. Now, this concept of eccentricity measures how much the shape of the Earth's orbit departs from a perfect circle and changes from a circular shape to an elliptical shape over a number of years. And these variations affect the distance between the Earth and the Sun. So as the Earth orbits closer to the Sun, the climate becomes warmer and the opposite happens as it orbits away. And this entire concept changes every 100,000 years. So, so when the Earth's orbit is at its most elliptical, about 23% more incoming solar radiation reaches Earth at our planet's closest approach to the Sun each year than it does at its farthest departure from the Sun. Now currently the Earth's eccentricity is near its least elliptical, almost circular, and it is very slowly decreasing. And this cycle spans about 100,000 years. So every 100,000 years, it will go from circular to elliptical, circular to elliptical. Now, the next concept in Milankovitch theory is known as obliquity. And this refers to the angle of the Earth's axis. Now, you should be aware that the Earth actually tilts on an axis of about 23 degrees. And this is the reason why the Earth has seasons. Now, over the last million years, our tilt angle has actually varied between 22 degrees and 24 degrees perpendicular to the Earth's orbital plane. So 
The greater the Earth's axial tilt angle, the more extreme our seasons are, as each hemisphere will then receive more solar radiation during its summer, when the hemisphere is actually tilted towards the sun, and then it will receive less during the winter when it's tilted away from the sun. Now, currently, the Earth's axis is tilted at about 23 degrees, or about halfway between these two extremes of 22 degrees and 24 degrees. And this angle is very slowly decreasing back to 22 degrees in a cycle that spans about 41,000 years. Now, the angle of the tilt changes due to the gravitational pull of the moon. So when the angle of the tilt increases, this can exaggerate the climate. So our summers get warmer, our winters get colder. And the opposite will happen when the angle decreases. The third and final concept in the Milankovitch theory is known as precession. Now, as the Earth rotates, it actually wobbles slightly on its axis, like a slightly off-center spinning toy. Now, this wobble is due to tidal forces caused by the gravitational influences of the sun and the moon, and this causes the Earth to bulge at the equator, affecting its rotation. Now, axial precession makes seasonal contrast more extreme in one hemisphere and less extreme in the other when it occurs. It also gradually changes the timing of seasons, causing them to begin earlier over time and gradually changes which star the Earth's axis points to at the North Pole. So the reason for axial precession is because the Earth is not a perfect sphere. So as the Earth spins, it wobbles on its axis. And this takes place over a cycle period of about 26,000 years. So the second natural cause of climate change is known as solar output or sunspot activity. Now the output of the sun is measured by observing these sunspots, these dark patches on the surface of the sun. And they appear dark because they are cooler than other parts of the sun's surface. Now, solar flares that you can see on the screen are these sudden explosions of energy that are caused by the reorganisation of magnetic field lines near those sunspots. And sunspots are caused by this magnetic activity inside the sun, which results in dark patches on the surface of the sun. Now, the sun's output is not completely constant. So cycles have been detected that reduce or increase the amount of solar energy. And this occurs over the course of an 11 year period. The theory goes that the more sunspot activity the sun produces, the more heat the sun gives out. But if we look at previous data collected on solar output, the data actually shows that the overall solar output from the sun has barely changed in the last 50 years. And therefore, solar output cannot be responsible for the cause of climate change seen from the 1970s. However, we can connect a trend between solar output and temperature increases between 1880 and about 1960. So these cooler periods such as the Little Ice Age and warmer periods such as the medieval warm period may have been caused by changes in sunspot activity. The third natural cause of climate change is known as volcanic activity or eruption theory. And this is where we have volcanic eruptions producing that ash, that sulfur dioxide gas, which is released into the atmosphere. It will go past the troposphere into the stratosphere, one of the higher levels of the atmosphere. And any particles and any gases will be circulated and picked up by those high level winds and circulated around the earth. Now this blanket of ash and gas will then prevent sunlight or solar radiation reaching the Earth's surface and instead will reflect, block it out or refract it back into space, cooling our planet. Some of the solar radiation is absorbed by these gases and ash, but we have still a reduced amount of sunlight and solar radiation reaching the troposphere, which eventually results in a drop in global climate. Now, this was actually seen in June of 1991 when Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines erupted. It erupted an ash cloud and threw it high into the stratosphere, carrying it around the world for about three weeks. 
Now, this is an extremely important concept in understanding the impact of volcanic activity and volcanic eruptions and what, how they affect the Earth's climate and contribute to climate change. So approximately 20 million tonnes of sulphur dioxide was actually released by Mount Pinatubo in 1991. And when that sulphur dioxide mixes with water vapour, it becomes a volcanic aerosol, which reflects that sunlight away and reduces the sun's heat energy entering the Earth's atmosphere. So overall, following this particular volcanic eruption, we had a global temperature drop of about 0.5 degrees Celsius. So that concludes this short video. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if you are finding these videos useful and I'll see you next time.